Hello and welcome to the Discover History YouTube channel and tonight we thought we'll give you an archaeological themed video and as you know I'm quite passionate about archaeology to the point that whilst we was on Hadrian's Ward um, as we was walking uh, uh, following Hadrian's Ward uh, all the way we did come across in some mole hills and also basically in the rocks uh, specifically on the riverbank for example um, we did find some artifacts really so we thought tonight's video should be if you find any artifacts in your garden for example when I did the video about doing a quick what's often referred to as a field walk um, where you'd pick things up off the surface so you don't actually dig you just pick things up off the surface um, hopefully you've collated those things together and it's always good to clean them up. So tonight we're going to do a video on how you would clean archaeology. It's usually referred to as pot washing. And pot washing is a bit of a silly word because it doesn't just involve pottery. It actually involves anything that you find. So for example, if I said to you all tomorrow, go into the garden again and pick up the finds on the surface, basically a bit like what myself and Ian was doing walking Hadrian's Wall, in other words, um, field walking, picking the items up off the surface, put them all together and then clean them up so you can actually see what you've got. And like I said, that's what's going on there. Now you will need a number of things to help you clean archeology span and you need to do it carefully and safely. You need, first of all, some newspaper, you also require an old toothbrush, not a relations toothbrush, not your parents toothbrush, but an older toothbrush. You also need either a kebab stick with a spike on the end or cocktail sticks. And then you need a bowl or what you should use really are two bowls. And then obviously you need all the artifacts that you have found. Now it's always good practice before you wash anything to categorize them because you don't wash all objects. So you might want to put, for example, glassware to one side. This is a small beaker. Wasn't found on Hadrian's wall, by the way, but it is a glass beaker. And you do find those in jars, especially ink pots, that sort of thing, uh, on, on the surface in some cases. Now the problem with glass is glass can decay, believe it or not. Usually glass will go um, very pearl-like, so you will get lots and lots of different colours, like a rainbow effect on the surface. That type of glass you shouldn't wash because that will literally crumble apart uh, completely, actually. Um, so you've got to be very careful with it. So um, put your glassware to one side. You will also need to put any pottery to one side. So there's a fragment of pottery that we actually found on Hadrian's Wall last week. So this is a small piece of Roman pottery. So you want to put that together. I've also got a very small fragment of Roman pottery that was actually found in the river shingle up on Hadrian's Wall. And a cute little find that I found, tiny little piece in fact, was a small piece of Samian ware, which was actually found uh, in a molehill that I managed to see. It caught my eye because of the red tinge to it. That was on Hadrian's Wall. So put your pottery together, and then you might want to put all your bone together. Now this was not found on Hadrian's Wall, so this is a bit of animal bone, so keep that separately. And then obviously things like wooden objects, leather objects and even metal objects. Now metal objects in theory shouldn't be washed purely because if they're especially made out of iron they are probably rusted and as soon as you start washing them they will fall apart in their own right. So you've really got to have a look at those objects, categorise them and decide if they're too fragile to wash or not. So once you've got your collection together, maybe what you found in the flower bed at home or like in, in our case what we've come across just walking a field, field walking as such, you then want to clean them up. And the first thing you need to do is take either a cocktail stick or a kebab stick. Basically, you need it to be made out of wood. Wood is actually pretty soft stuff and it won't damage the object too much. So you have here a kebab stick and we've got the pointy end. 
Now if you've got something like bone, what you can use this for is to actually pick out the dry soil. So you need to let it dry and therefore just start carefully extracting all the soil from the bone, from the outside and from the inside. Do be careful with bone on the outside purely because you could get staining on the bone which you don't want to destroy and you also have very 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 faint very fragile cut marks sometimes which shows signs of butchery so you don't want to damage that too much so you've got to be very delicate when you're doing this um, once you've cleaned off the surface dirt for example you then need to wash them and what you need for that is a bowl of water we usually say have two bowls of water one for the actual initial washing and then the other one for uh, just 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 um, cleaning off shall we say really any surface water at the end any surface dirty water so what we do is we take our toothbrush and it's very important not to immerse objects in the water especially some forms of pottery if you're looking at bronze age pottery for example it's often referred to as biscuit like and if you put it in water it will literally dissolve it will crumble away until you've got nothing left of it so don't immerse anything in the bowl of water so the best thing to do is take your toothbrush dip it in the water throw off some of the excess water and then gently wash your find and it's surprising what you will see you will see the color come out in it play uh, pay particular attention to where the break is but don't rub it too hard because what you can see then is the makeup of the pottery and remember that's really important we can age uh, a piece of pottery from really what's it been made from is there signs of grit in it is there small bits of sand particles in it that sort of thing so be very very gentle on it and you may even find decoration on the outside of the pot that you didn't see when you actually picked it up so it's really important to be delicate with it and always make sure you clean the brush every single time and what will happen is your one bowl will get very very dirty very very quickly and then all you need to do is once you think that that object that artifact is clean then do one final rinse by dipping your brush in water and then just doing a final move across the surface and that was in the other bowl the cleaner bowl so a final rinse in there but remember we do not immerse the object in the water that can damage the item so once you've done that it's very important to take your newspaper spread it out somewhere and lie all the cleaned artifacts on it because what you don't want to do is put it in a bag and put it away because what will happen is condensation will build up and I can guarantee inside your bag you'll have a whole forest of mold growing over the top of your artifacts which will eventually damage it even further so you've got to be very very gentle and very very uh, delicate with what you're doing really as I said it's um, really good practice to walk across a field um, or a footpath like myself and Ian and, and just keep a lookout for objects and that is technically field walking just pick the objects up and then when you get home wash them very carefully in the way we said and uh, admire them and if you want to uh, record them get a little notebook uh, write down the object uh, write down the information on it draw it photograph it this is all what archaeologists actually do but be careful because some of the objects are extremely fragile but there is advice out there there is a number of archaeological sites uh, on the internet for example the Council of British Archaeology I would always draw your attention to the portable antiquity scheme and that's really worth having a look on because if you go on their website there is advice on how to look after your finds this is actually a little guide that I picked up some time ago which actually tells you how to look after your finds be it made out of metal made out of pottery glass and that sort of thing if you do have something made out of leather for example which you can sometimes find if it's been found in waterlogged ground it's always important to keep it waterlogged the rule is if the object is soaking wet and it's organic like leather or wood then keep it wet you don't want to shock your find by suddenly drying it out it's actually the worst thing you can do really 
The other book that I use a lot of is pretty old now and this was by the British Archaeological Trust and it's a very good manual known as First Aid for Finds and it's a ring binder style, a bit like my British Archaeological, uh, uh, British um, Museum of London actually, Museum of London manual of archaeology and it breaks everything down into how to pack objects away, how to look after glass objects, how to look after pottery, what to do with, for example, a Bronze Age pot, which is very, very fragile, and it gives you advice on absolutely everything, really. But most of this advice is online anyway, so do have a look. So a little task, uh, now the summer holidays is here, a bit like when lockdown was on, is maybe have a look in your flower bed, see what there is. Don't start digging. Uh, what you can do is just this field walking exercise. Whatever's on the surface, collate together, uh, clean it in the way I said. Do not immerse the objects in water. Dry them out thoroughly and then write about them. Maybe start your own little museum in your bedroom, for example, that people can come and have a look at. Uh, staying uh, socially distant, by the way. Uh, family members, however, you can uh, always uh, have an opening night and let them come and have a look and maybe do a talk on the finds that you've found in your garden. Anyway, on that note, stay safe. Uh, like I said, uh, look after your finds if you find them and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye bye.